today's uh, tutorial is on using Ableton to make samples and make them match whatever BPM you want. So the first thing we need to do is open up Ableton, which you see I've done here, and we need to switch it to the, not the sample view or the, you know, the view which, which you see each little channel. It's the big view, the linear view. You can switch that in the top right corner. Um, this is my method for making loops. I'm sure there are a million other ways to do it. Um, but what I'm going to do now is here I have an empty audio track. I'm going to go ahead and place a song into here, which I have right here, this little eighth. So I'm going to grab it and drag it into Ableton. Okay, now I actually want to from the start. It does warp on its own, and actually it can figure out BPM for you, but I, I'm going to do this the long way just so it's, I get to do the whole thing myself. So I'm going to unwarp it. It's the first thing I'm going to do. So I click on the file if I need to, and then unwarp it. So I uncheck warp. Next, I'm going to find a loop, which if I remember correctly, it's right around 25 or something. So so let's see. I move my little loop marker, which you might have hiding somewhere over here. And if it is, you can just, you know, get it and drag it over. And I drag it over to a part where I like the loop, and then I make it bigger or smaller as necessary, and then hit the little loop button in the top right corner. So then let's hear it again, and I'm pressing spacebar to hear it. And it's almost there. It looks like it could probably come in a little later. And I'm just using the waveforms as a guide. You see it kind of gets thicker here, so that's a good guide. And then I'm going to look over here, sliding over. You can put your mouse in between the numbers and the thin little line at the top of the screen right in there. Your mouse will become a magnifying glass, and then if you drag up and down, it'll let you move the, the zoom of the whole thing. So let's hear this again from the top. So that sounds good. And you see I also went to where the waveform started to get big and I started it where it got big. So I'm just kind of using my eyes to gu gu gauge it. Now I'm going to zoom back in and I'm going to delete the stuff I don't need. I don't need anything before the loop. So I'm just highlighting and deleting. And then I'm going to do the same at the end. I'm going to highlight and delete. Okay. So now this is my loop. I'll test it again. Oop. That sucks. That happens sometimes. Just have to move it back on there. Let's just put it back to the top of the loop. There we go. That's where we were. Double check it again. And that sounds awesome. It's looping fine for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete what was ever in the front of the track and delete what was ever in the back of the track. And this is all I really care about now is that little loop. So I'm going to grab that loop and I'm going to go ahead and drag it all the way to the beginning of the track. I'm also going to take my loop markers all the way to the beginning of the track. Then I'm going to zoom into the beginning of the track, putting my mouse in between the top bar and the numbers. Now, ideally, when you make loops, there's no rules, but ideally you want it to be a four bar loop. So it's easy to make drum beats on top of it. So ideally, I'm going to move my looper. It'd be cool if the loop ended here. But as you can see, the loop's a little longer because the BPM and the loop don't match yet. But now, I'm going to change the BPM to match the loop. So since it's not warped, when I adjust the BPM, it'll just basically shrink the loop without actually messing it up. So you'll see I'm going to go up here to the, the loop, uh, excuse me, the BPM thing. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down. And you'll notice that the loop looks smaller. It still sounds the same. I'm just actually changing the time. You see how there's a number down here for the seconds? So we're just changing the BPM, the global BPM, without actually changing the loop. And then you'll see at 97, the loop fits right into a 97 BPM with a four bar loop. So now when I press spacebar, And that's pretty good. I mean, we could probably tweak the beginning and the end a tiny bit, but for the purposes of this 
tutorial, we were good. If we needed to tweak it, you could just go back a few steps and just, you know, push it over a little left and right. But this is good. So now that I've got it, I'm going to double click the loop again just to see what I've got down here. And you'll notice that I'm looping a section of it, but I've got all this extra junk that is just going to slow me down later. So I'm going to get rid of the extra stuff by right clicking on the track's name and choosing consolidate. And that's going to cut away all the extra stuff. And what that does when I do that is it automatically warps it again. Now this time, it's cool that it warps it because it's warping it and it's in the shape of the loop that I want. So now the cool thing is if I change the BPM, I'm now going to be changing the BPM of the loop, which might be cool because you're saying, oh, you know, I want that loop, but I want this song to be really fast. Well, now I could go back to the BPM slider, and since now the loop got warped because I pressed consolidate, now I could bring this up to like 140 or something, and the loop is going to play faster, but still loop correctly. And I could go ridiculous just to you know illustrate the point. Let's go to 180 something. And it's pretty good. It's looping pretty good. I also could lower it down. If I wanted to, to like super slow. You get the drift. Now it was back at 97 where it was normal. Now there's a couple things you can do while you're here. If you wanted to make it sound better, you can play with choosing complex or complex pro or repitch. And then it'll sometimes sound less computery. Sometimes it still sounds computery no matter what, like that glitchy sound. The other thing that's cool is that once you warp it, is you can change the pitch without changing the timing. So for example, right now it's playing like this at 97. Sounds cool, but what if we wanted to be higher pitched, same timing? Well, then I can transpose it up 12 steps, which would be one whole octave up. And now it's playing a whole octave up. So what you do at this point, now that you've got the loop, and I'm going to actually put it back to zero, is I'm just going to make a bunch of copies. And you see I made it so it's a four bar loop. So that ends at five, which is smart. And then to make a bunch of copies, I just click on the file and press Command D if you're on the Mac or Control D if you're on the PC. Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. And now I have like my backing track. So the next thing I would do is, you know, make some other beats or something. Um, and actually I'm taking a look here. I might have actually gone a little bit over. Yeah, actually that's a good thing. You see how when I looped, it started to fall off. This is a good little mistake that I made. I'll show you what happened. I'm gonna actually delete all these guys. When I was making the loop, I should actually have zoomed in because you see, it's just hanging a little bit over number five. So I'm just gonna cut that in. Now it's perfect four bar loop. So now I can do that thing I was just did a second ago. And it lines up perfectly. And then I can uncheck loop and now this song will play. And I can start from the beginning or the end or whatever. And it's done. So I made a loop. I made it fit um, to whatever BPM I want. And that's it. Okay, bye. <laughs>